You use him as a is it out to uh, I say yes. He said, ah, I've, I've, I've given it out. Ah, my shirt. He <laughs> gave my shirt out. How? He said, it's not good. I don't like it. Ah. It's our shirt now. We, when, when we came together, we became one. <laughs> <laughs> like, have I ever looked at your own clothes to say this one gave it out? I was like, no, you should don't need to wear this clothes. Ah. Initially, I was I was about to. No, but I was the meaning of all this, but then I realized that. Well, it has to be changes and If you really want to keep the home going, you want to keep it flourishing, keep praying. So I said three. What do you? Is there a number? No, there was no okay, number. Okay, okay. So I can just give one. No, 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 no. Okay. The minimum you give is three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the one who said I should go first. Okay, um, I'd say I think this one it was actually God that taught me to not take things too personally. And to not take things too seriously. You know, as women, we like some things to be done in some certain ways. And if God blesses you with a husband that doesn't make life difficult for you, he doesn't make life dif difficult for me. Blurred. <laughs> but <clears throat> I can be sort of like, I don't want to use the word perfection. a perfectionist. I don't think I'm, I'm, I'm a perfectionist. Who am I to answer that question? <laughs> But then I feel like when you're coming into marriage, you have to let go of some things because you're not living alone anymore. Mm. And you have to try to see um, from the other person's point of view. So not taking things personally and trying to see from the other person's point of view, trying to like put yourself in that person's shoes. Like if I was a guy... How would I see this? How would I feel about this? Mm. Right? And also, you just said, okay, this thing is really not really a big deal. I, I don't mean to just, you know, start going all spiritual. But sometimes we sort of blow things out of proportion. Or we sort of hold on to things that, to be honest, they are not meant to be held on to. And then, unfortunately, it starts growing and becomes such a big issue. Mm. So I've just realized that there are a lot of things that are really not a big deal. And if it's possible, just, just don't take things too seriously. Life shouldn't even be taken too seriously. And if that is done, you realize, well, I realized that I actually was enjoying this friendship so much more. Another thing is trying to do things that he likes to. I like my things. I used to like my space, but getting married to him... I realized that I needed to communicate more. And in communicating more, I needed to know so much more about him and understand him more so that I would also like the things that he likes, which will help us to be able to communicate better, have things to talk about. From there, our friendship became deeper. Just makes you, you know, like each other's company so much more. I like spending time with him. I, as much as I, I love my space, I really love spending time with him. So I think learning to communicate better. I could go on and on, but I will probably just end with prayerfulness. No, I've said prayer. Say it now. I feel like I just need to like <laughs> emphasize on prayerfulness. Like it's really important. Yes, yes. Just like he mentioned, there was like a short period of time where we are not as close as we used to be. It was just a short period and. We just realized that what's going on and we just realized that we're not praying together and ah, immediately we, st we, we just you know ask god to forgive us and all and automatically see prayer works wonders like i cannot even over emphasize this prayer works wonders and it has really helped us in this family even before we got married and mm -hmm. we just pray that god will just keep keep helping us mm -hmm. it's not like we have all the wisdom no mm -hmm. we are eight we, we are just two years how many months we are babies mm -hmm. you know but we just we um, one thing that has really worked for us is holding on to god and asking him every single day 
to help us, to help me to be a better wife, to help him to be a better husband to me. Yeah. So we have to give tips to guide those trusting God, whether it is in selecting a life partner or remaining happily married. Um, should I go first again? Oh. I think it is very important to have a relationship with God before marriage. Let's be open to say, you know what, God give what's best for me, right? If we want to take a decision without God, God will force himself, but always going to God to ask him to say, what's your thoughts? I need your help. He would obviously come and he'll give us the best. Even though sometimes we feel that's what he may be giving us at the time may not be the best, but he really, really knows. So it's building that relationship so that when the time for even marriage comes into play, one knows that, okay, this is how God speaks to me. And you know, and the individual knows that, okay, God is actually telling me now to go in this direction. And in terms of how to stay in happily married, well, I, I'd say... <sighs> Let's try to do what we used to do before we got married. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, I would say I am guilty. Men, we are very project-oriented, as um, Pastor Kingsley Okonkwa would say. Yeah, yeah, we're very project oriented. We want to do something, we get it done, and we move on. We are looking for something else. So sometimes we apply that to our marriage. It's not as if we intentionally want to do it that way, but it's just the way we are wired. So it's trying to do those little things that we used to do, those messages that we used to send. And, you know, before we got married, hey, uh, how are you doing? How's your day? Oh, I love you. How is this? How are you doing? Um, buying gift even when it's not an anniversary or it's not a bed. Just, hey, I brought this for you. We go out, we come back, we get something, flowers, could be chocolates, just to show that at least we are thinking about them and they really love that. So it's just, keep we keep chasing, let's keep chasing them. Yeah, I think that's what makes them happy. And then um, doing a lot of things together, playing together, I think. Yeah, there's, really, there's a need to play, um, have games, spend the quality time because we are all busy. We get as we get older, yeah. we get very busy. Things coming through, but let's try to play. You know, let's try to um, relax with ourselves, if possible, without the children, and just stay somewhere without phones. Just talk about times, old times, how things we laugh. Yeah, I think. Those things are quite important. And as you mentioned, life is not hard. Let's do whole things through our hearts. It's expected that we would offend each other. She would offend me, I would offend her. It's not as if I intentionally want to offend her, she intentionally wants to offend yeah. me. It's just it. I'd say we should forgive forward, forgive ahead. Mm. Yeah, so when something is done, you can easily just say, you know what, that's fine. I'm forgiving you. Let's go ahead. Let's move on. And to so always look for the, for the solution to whatever challenge. Let's look at okay, you know what, it has happened, how can we solve it, how can we prevent it from happening next time, what can we learn from it, and if we do that, I think it will be help and the grace of God, and especially through prayer as well, yeah, we expect a happily married home, but we are, we are still babies at this, <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not an expert, <laughs> what do you? I feel like you Comment oh no, that's, 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 the, that's what I, you know. I know you, you say you feel like I've covered quite a lot. You still have something to do. <laughs> I feel like you've covered quite a lot already, but I'll probably just say, um, from my own point of view and from my very little experience, I would say it's likely to start taking <clears throat> your husband for granted, and it shouldn't be because he's your partner he's your friend and he should be treated with accord just like you would like yourself to be treated to mm -hmm. right and moving to the spiritual aspect to god has made husbands to be our head right um i'll just say when you said you were, and you were happy to spend the rest of your life with him i feel like it means you trust him to a very large extent to be able to leave your parents' house, to come and live with this stranger because you've not known 
this person like all your life even if you've been family friends for like years like you guys have not lived together mm -hmm. and all so um i think you should love with reckless abandon mm -hmm. i think that's one thing i do mm -hmm. i love with reckless abandon when i first got married i was holding back because we're just getting to know each other but i had to pray and you know loving and i'm still working on it yes like loving with reckless abandon and according him the respect that he's my friend he's my guy he's my g and <laughs> he gives me peace of mind right mm -hmm. and it's easy to just take that for granted and just say he will not talk he's not david ah, david david gentle david ah quiet david ah, david, ah cool. let me let him live. <laughs> but then at the end of the day i have to like remember that this is the head of the house this is the person that god has put sort of like above me so to speak right and all and many times he prays for me and i know that yes this is a man of god that mm -mm, calm down i'm not telling you pastor <laughs> but what i'm just trying to say in summary is our husbands actually are leaders in our homes and we should give them that respect that's one thing that i've learned from my little experience also another thing i've learned is that um there are times that he tells me something he or gives me an advice or he gives me a suggestion and i don't do it i say no i'll do it my way a lot of times that thing flops or something goes wrong and God reminds me that you do not listen to your husband. And um, so I've learned, I've learned me, this is for me. You may know, I don't know if it's, but I've learned to listen to him more, right? Not because I don't have my own ideas or I don't have my way of thinking, but I feel like God has, God brought us together to help each other, right? And there are times that I may not see some things god might minister it to him right and he might see it or he might see it from a different point of view i feel like god brought us together to make us whole listen more even for the for the husbands to listen to your wife so much more w women just like you mentioned women see things right and um i think lastly i wanted to mention one more point but i've forgotten it i've forgotten yeah yeah also please go for vacations even if your husband will not tell him about it not that you nag or anything but and also pray see there are times that you won't go you want your husband to do something you go and report him to god you will do it by force by fire i'm serious like go for vacations these things build they make your relationship fresher they make it exciting mm -hmm. see places together if you don't like traveling Look for things that both of you like or like he finds interesting, you find interesting. If you don't like the same things, maybe do something that he likes, both of you, do, and then another time do something that you like, you know. Just don't just go about the routine. Life can get so busy. Don't just, you know, don't let it just be that boring. Mm -hmm. it, it's not easy. I know, yes, and then things are so expensive, but it, you don't have to probably travel to a very far place. It might just be one night in your city, but somewhere else, or you know, just doing something different or even like making a very special, I don't know, dinner at home, but making it all, you know, you dress up and go just look for things, ways to spice up your relationship, your friendship. Yeah. I think that's one other thing I wanted to mention. And yes, pray, 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 pray. The devil doesn't like ha happy marriages. The devil doesn't like happy homes. Mm. We need to constantly pray i uh, please constantly pray life gets busy sometimes we get tired i'm guilty very very guilty but we just ask god for grace to you know keep helping us yeah. and yeah yeah so uh, one more thing came to mind um i think so i think this is directed more to the man um i'll just say let's try to be a ceo so let me let me rephrase that so that it doesn't look as if I'm serious. Again. <laughs> um, so the role of a chief executive in an organization basically is to ensure that there's a right culture, there's a right vision, there's a right um, um, environment for talent to thrive. And as a leader in the home, I think that's one of our that's our major duty. And as much as we are the we are the leader, we should 
we are not there to instruct or say, oh, my, my word is final. But we are there to ensure that the home has the right culture where the children can thrive, where they can have the best, where our spouse can also bloom. Mm. It's creating that environment, ensuring that it is there. Yes, we are not there to say, oh, it has to be done, but we define the vision. We define where, where we want the family to be in the next five, six years. And we are able to sell that vision to our executives, which in this case is a family, is our wives, our children, oftentimes the wife. To get criticism, to see, okay, is it, does it, is it good? And then everyone, including the spouse, the children, and ourselves as well, we can bloom, we can thrive, we can you know, grow in the environment. Yeah, so that's what I'm Yeah, doing. one more thing. What, so we're going to wrap up now. One more thing. There's something that um, David started doing when we got married. It's sort of like a, like a monthly evaluation that he does with respect to our relationship. It might sound serious, but it's not that, it's not that serious, but then it has helped. So what he, what, what he used to do is he would say, okay, babe, come Let's talk. So, in the last month, or in the last few, actually, we've not been doing it so much of yeah, late. In the last few, um, in the last month, in the last few weeks, how have I not performed well? What are some things that I need to improve on? What are the things that I do that you do not like? And the first time he did it, I was like, okay, uh uh, okay. <laughs> but it really helps and then me to realize that okay i need to also you know ask these questions because i'm not perfect right and it has helped because you might not know you're doing something that is not that does not make um him happy or he might not know that he's doing things that does not make me happy and this is all about communication sometimes you have to be intentional about communicating okay. so i think that might be something that some people might want to try it's really nice it still helps with communication. Um, they used to say women should talk more because they cannot read your mind, right? And I really hope I will not be misquoted in all of the things that we're saying. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, basically, I think that might be something that could work. It would help you understand each other better. It will help you change, correct some things that need to be corrected mm. and also improve on things. So I also say, okay, this is how you've been doing so well. And please, I want you to continue this. When he too, he will tell me, things that we doing so it's not all you know negatives it's all you know positives and areas in which you can improve on and areas you've been doing so fantastic and just continue that way or ah, do it more you understand things like that and i think it actually helps mm. yeah so i think so far that's that's all yeah so yeah i'm going to pray yes pray. so should be you pray Heavenly Father, we really thank you for this time mm -hmm. that we've spent with everyone watching. Mm -hmm. We are thankful for the gifts of life. Mm -hmm. We are thankful for your love. We are thankful that you even died for us on the cross of Calvary. You died for our sins. We are thankful for your mercies and your faithfulness accept our thanks and praises Amen. lord we've touched on the beauty of marriage and lord we pray for everyone listening mm -hmm. that you would reach out to them Amen. for those that are looking to you for future partners we pray lord jesus that you lead them aright Amen. we pray lord jesus that they will wait on you till you bring that perfect person for Amen. them that person that meets their need, Amen. that person that you've marked out for them, Amen. that both of them will achieve the purpose you have for their lives together. Amen. Please pray to them in Jesus' name. Amen. We also pray for every home Amen. that is already formed, Amen. that your presence will dwell in them. Amen. Every a, Anyone that needs more peace, more love, more excitement in their family, in their home, in their relationship, you will give it to them in Amen. Jesus' name. You said we should ask and we shall receive. So we are asking, Lord, that you increase the love in our home, Amen. you increase the peace in our home, Amen. you will increase the beauty in our home Amen. that we want to thoroughly enjoy this thing called marriage, Amen. we want to enjoy our union, we want to enjoy life. Please do this for us in Jesus' name. Amen. And we know that your coming is very imminent. Please make us ready. Amen. 
glory awaits in Zion. Amen. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye, everyone. <laughs>